Oh, hey, didn't see you there. I was testing my chronograph feature on my Audemars Piguet. How's it going, everyone? What's up? Watch, click. Today, I want to share some information with you that I think you will find very interesting. In the world of timepieces, we are known, especially the traders, wholesalers, and dealers, to get caught in our ways of sharing lingo, jargon, verbose verbiage, if you will, that can be confusing. So for the average Joe, or for someone who's just getting started, to the person who's been in this industry for quite some time and maybe just doesn't know all of the verbiage that is spewed back and forth between people, I'm gonna give you guys a breakdown of different acronyms and what they mean. So by the end of this video, you'll be able to go out into the wide world of acronyms of the watch lingo linguise and basically sound like an expert even if you've only owned one watch or never bought a watch before in your life. So get ready for some compound acronym definitions. We're gonna quiz you at the end and we'll be WTB, LOL, ROFLing all over the place by the end of it, all right? So let's get into it. WTB, want to buy. Usually you'll see this acronym when you are posting up in a forum or some of the watch enthusiast groups if someone's looking for a specific timepiece. WTB is a call to action looking for that specific watch. NTQ, need to quote. So NTQ is also used in exchange sometimes for WTB when someone is buying a watch, typically for another customer. So you'll see a lot of dealers, wholesalers, traders use NTQ, whether you're on Reddit or the forums. If they are looking to get a quote on a watch, they will share that type of watch with you and typically look to see if you can supply them to answer that quote. NTB, need to buy. So NTB is very similar to WTB, the same acronym of need to buy. There's really not much more to it. They're looking for that watch. FS and FSOT. So you'll see a lot of this acronym in the enthusiast groups, uh, on forums, and anywhere you find watch collectors. FS very simply is for sale, or FSOT is for sale or trade. So this means that the counterparty who is listing their watch for sale or posting it up is open to selling it outright. Sometimes they want to entertain trades as well, and that's an open invitation to suggest a trade with them instead of just cash purchase for the watch they are selling. WTT, want to trade. So if a person who's listing a watch is open to trading into something else, they're either, uh, either usually looking specifically at a watch in a certain range of something that they really want and don't want to outlay any cash, or they're looking for different types of ideas that could potentially fit a new thing that entertains them and gives them a new toy to wear on their wrist. Uh, this is usually used when someone is much more of an enthusiast, not necessarily a retail client or a person who's an end consumer like some of you out there, but you can do it no matter what level you are at in this industry and in this trade. WTT signifies to other people that you are entertaining trades. ISO, in search of. So you will see this acronym when people are searching for a specific watch. FTO, for trade only. You don't really see this one out there uh, very much, but when you do see it, that person is specifically looking for trades and more than likely not going to entertain a straight sale or buy unless you come up with something very, very, uh, I guess, lucrative or something that will benefit them. FSO, for sale only, very self-explanatory. This person wants to close a deal on the watch they are selling and probably will not entertain trades. OBO not oboe, like the instrument that you are used to seeing played in elementary school. OBO is or best offer, typically found on the forums and enthusiast groups. OBO works across multiple industries, but essentially they're asking for a price on the watch that you're selling, and OBO is or best offer. That means it's not a hard pressed, this is my firm price. If you come at me with a serious offer or something that you wanna pay, I'll entertain it. Soft call, a soft call is a level of someone wanting a watch where the person they are sourcing the watch for, or maybe themselves, is not necessarily hyper committed to buying that watch today, but is simply looking for options on the market that they can potentially buy. So they will indicate a soft call to give you the impression that they are looking and entertaining the possibility of buying, 
but not to be upset if they aren't gonna buy it today or they're still working on price or a few of the details. Soft call is a way to get an idea of what you can actually pull the trigger on without necessarily you know, letting people know that it's gonna to happen today, if you will, so you're still entertaining quotes. Medium call, so as you can imagine, on this scale of different varying degrees, a medium call in the market is when you have a customer that you're sourcing for, or maybe you're looking for a watch from someone who's a dealer or an end consumer, where you have the money in hand, you think you have a budget in place, and you're getting serious about making a purchase. You may have just narrowed it down to one or two variations of the model, or you may have a few questions about how complete it is, but you're getting to the point where you're about to buy. Medium call is right in between a soft call and a hard call. Hard call. Hard call is basically a sold order. So when someone says they have a hard call for a watch, they're essentially saying that the budget has been determined, that the person or themselves have cash in hand, and that they can make a deal happen ASAP if you meet the criteria of the watch price and specifications they're looking for. Sold order. Sold order is a slightly varying degree of hard call. Sold order is the final varying spectrum on this quote system where a sold order is essentially the person who is buying for a customer or themselves has the money in hand, has the person convinced that they're paying, the financial commitment piece of that has been done, so as long as they have the actual criteria fit, the deal is done. This is basically your opportunity, especially if you're selling, to fill that order, knowing that you're not gonna waste your time with tire kickers. Mazel! Mazel, Jewish word. <laughs> Some say Yiddish, but Mazel is known more specifically in the industry between traders and dealers as a term that is about rapport and about committing to the trade process to keep your word. So some groups won't use this term, but if you hear the term, it's not just a celebration of life and religion, it's actually a way of saying don't break mazel, which means if you say, I'll take the watch, yes, I'll buy the watch, I will sell you the watch, your word is your bond. And in this industry, everything is based on your reputation and your word. So if you break it, you must take it seriously because very, 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 very small networks apply here and people will know if you don't do good business, you may never get a watch you want again. PP, not like the urinal, all right? PP is PayPal, a different way of transacting on deals. PP very simply is do you want to do this transaction through PayPal? P, P, G, and S. So G and S stands for goods and services. Typically you will have a goods and services transaction through PayPal on eBay or some of the platforms that protect you from transactions. The other alternative to that would be P, P, uh, F and F, which stands for friends and family, in which you can share funds with each other through the PayPal uh, app or through that platform, but you won't have the protections in that realm of doing the deal because PayPal is assuming you know this counterparty and you don't need those protections so they won't take their fee on top. Your label. So you'll see the word label thrown around a lot uh, and if you haven't done this often it may be confusing. Label is an actual shipping label usually prepaid by whatever counterparty is taking on the liability and risk of shipping. So when it says your label on a listing that means the person who is buying from you or whatever is assuming that you will actually ship the watch on your dime. So I highly suggest you either go through a third party shipping insurance company like IFS that we have in Watch Trading Academy, or you find a way to do it at least via FedEx because every other logistics company sucks and you still won't be fully insured. Long story short, you should be paying for insurance when you ship these expensive watches and your label will be part of that payment and it will be anywhere between, I'd say, $100 to $500 unless you go with a third-party insurance shipping company, in which case you can save money. My label. So my label is a dealer or someone else who is saying, you can even say this, I will prepay for the label. That's part of the package of this deal. Uh, X amount of dollars plus ship. So plus ship means, and sometimes they'll put a little icon with like a plane or like a boat, and that just stands for ship, right? It's a cute way of expressing it. Essentially, plus ship means the price that they are asking for their watch, plus ship, so they will charge you for whatever the shipping cost is. It's not just gonna be the flat price listed for the timepiece. Naked, everyone's favorite word. You get a lot of arouse, uh, arousal going on when you hear that word, but naked essentially means you're buying a watch where it's watch only. 
There's usually no box and papers, no warranty cards, no booklets. Uh, you can ask for specific details when you're talking through this to someone, but naked means watch only. Complete. So, so sounds self-explanatory, but it's not. Complete should mean warranty card, box, papers, booklets, anything that came stock factory with this watch. And it's good to clarify on this because some people cheat code or they slack off, especially wholesalers, and they'll say complete, but they don't have the warranty card or some of the authenticity paperwork that comes with it and they think it's complete when it's box, books, and that's it. So make sure you're asking, complete should mean everything that comes stock with that actual watch. Full kit, so that's not like kitted up like Fast and the Furious, that's not like full kit like me and my click. Full kit is an alternative to complete, which just means the box, papers, warranties that come stock with a uh, watch. Slider, so slider is an interesting term. It essentially is a term that was coined from a lot of the dealers, but slider means the watch can pass as basically brand new. So if you have a watch that still has the plastic on it, never been worn, has box and papers, but it's coming from the gray market or from you as a counterparty, not from an authorized dealer, technically it can't be listed as brand, brand new. It can be listed as a slider, which means it can pass as brand new. Partially stickered, fully stickered, anything stickered references the small stickers that come on a luxury timepiece when you are buying it from an authorized dealer. Sometimes you'll see these applied from gray market dealers as a way to make it look newer than it is. Stickers are usually taken off when you purchase a watch from an authorized dealer, but oftentimes they will leave some stickers on it. So this is just to indicate to you how new the watch is so that you as a counterparty can understand what quality and how unworn it actually is. So when you hear stickered, it's in reference to that. B and P, so B and P, box and papers. So some people will say that instead of complete. It's a way to just indicate that maybe it just has box and papers. So as I said before, always clarify if B and P means that the other things that are small things that come with it are there, like screwdrivers, like extra straps, et cetera, et cetera. NIB, new in box. So NIB is essentially new in box. You could take the watch out. It looks like it's never been worn. It shouldn't have been worn. And that's what NIB stands for. BNIB, brand new in box. So NIB, BNIB, very similar. BNIB is just an extra way of saying brand new in box. That should be not worn. That should not have any issues with scuffs, scratches, any of that. LNIB, like new in box. So now we're getting to specific details, right? LNIB is a way of saying that the watch is essentially like new, because that's what it stands for, but it may have been worn once, Maybe it still has you know, the bezel protector, but it doesn't have any stickers on it, and it's from 2019 and it's 2021, so it's like new inbox. Maybe you stored it away for a while, but it's not brand new, right? So it's your call to determine if you wanna say LNIB or NIB, but be honest and transparent. If you've worn it once, if you've taken it out and taken photos a bunch with it, it's probably not BNIB, it's LNIB. Wire. So down to the wire, Baltimore style. Wire is essentially short for a bank wire. So whenever you use that term, whether you're sourcing a piece or doing business with another person, that can indicate that you are willing to do the transaction through your banks. Uh, there is obviously less protections through wire uh, if you are someone who is buying, but there's more protections if you are a seller. So I love doing bank wires. I also shorten it to wire if I'm doing it and I wanna take someone off a platform where fees are incurred. Net to you, so this one's a uh, short term you'll hear probably, net to you is not going out, going fishing. Net to you is what are you gonna take home at the end of the day as a seller? So if I'm sourcing a watch from someone and I say, I can do this, net to you, all that means is you will take this home after all platform fees, after any transaction, after shipping, and that's what I can give to you for your final value fee on it. And that's important because sometimes people don't know what the fees are they're incurring, or sometimes it's good for them to know that you're considering that so they know which number you mean and they don't get confused. CONUS, C-O-N-U-S, one acronym. CONUS just means continental United States. So if someone says shipping in CONUS, that just means they're not willing to ship to uh, any islands or Hawaii, usually Alaska, um, you know, continental U.S. stays within the borders of this landmass. So you will see that sometimes when people are listing watches for sale. Fully linked. So fully linked and partially linked means different 
number of links that come on the watch. There are certain watches that have different numbers of links, and it's important depending on what type of piece you're getting, especially if you're collecting. So for example, with Rolex, usually full links means 12 links. If it's one short, it would be 11. Two short, it would be 10. And a lot of times you'll hear sized to wrist, which means that the authorized dealer sized that bracelet to the person who purchased it and their wrist, so they want to indicate to you that it's been sized. It doesn't have all the links on it. Sometimes the links are on the side with the set. Sometimes they've been removed and kept. So it's important to understand that. Understand if it's fully linked or if it's partially linked, and you can get that information, make sure you're clear on what you're actually buying and make sure you don't get any confusion to the person when you're selling. Bezel protector. So bezel protector, I just showed you one of those. I'll show you it again. Bezel protector is usually a piece of plastic that is on the watch that comes stock with the watch brand from uh, new from the manufacturer. So that is protected in shipment uh, bezel protectors can be purchased in the aftermarket, but you usually don't find them on timepieces, especially pre-owned. You usually find them on watches that are brand new from the manufacturer, so that's a bezel protector. REF, R-E-F, stands for reference number, which is the specific number of the model of the watch. So not the model number, the reference number. You can find reference numbers on Chrono24 or Google the reference number and look up the specific details of that exact watch. Mint. So now we're getting into describing the condition of watches. Mint is another word for impeccable, immaculate, 99% condition. So that means like new in box, no scratches on the case, no scratches on the clasp or the bracelet. It means literally like you take it out and it's so clean you can't find anything wrong with it. That is mint. Mint. Excellent. So excellent condition. And I want to lay this down for the record because there's a lot of variance on how people think certain things are excellent versus not. Excellent should be taken as 90% condition plus, okay? So excellent should be a piece that maybe has something so small you can barely see it with your eye or something that can be fixed or ignored. An example of excellent would be the watch is in immaculate shape, keeping time within plus or minus five seconds per day, and then having maybe a very, very, very small surface swirl on the clasp, which would be normal for any sort of person wearing it more than three times, right? So Excellent has everything with it. It's very, very good condition, 90% plus, 92% plus sometimes if you're a stickler, and that's how you would describe that. If there's any deep scratches, if you can tell there's big visual things that need to be polished out, that's okay, but it's not an excellent condition. Fair slash good. So fair slash good, either term, in terms of condition, is usually, I'd say, about 80 to 90 percent. So you can see some visual um, issues with the watch. Maybe there's some scratches on the bracelet. Maybe there's scratches on the clasp. Maybe the actual bezel, if it's like rubber, has this little uh, chip in it or it has a little bit of a wear. But it's nothing so dramatic that the person would be basically wholesaling it or not able to fix it if they wanted to. Fair, good condition is a piece that should still be working and intact but maybe is running a second a day slow, maybe has some, some TLC on it, and maybe you've been wearing it for a while, okay? Beater, so why beater? No, we don't encourage any of that. Beater basically stands for a watch that has been worn, loved, torn up, no regard for any sort of like keeping it clean. So a beater is perfectly fine if that's the way you wanna rock your watch. A lot of Breitlings, Panerai, Tool watches are worn as beaters. Some people joke and say my daily beater is like a AP brick or a gold Rolex, right? If they're joking about how much money they have. But a beater is essentially something that was worn without any sort of care of being scratched, hit, damaged, and they, they know that, they're telling you that. This was my daily beater, okay? So that's what I mean. Speaking of daily, so anything someone says where it's a daily, I've worn this daily, is their watch that they took out and wore every single day, right? So it's something that's gotten a lot of time on the wrist usually. Uh, nothing to necessarily be concerned about if everything else checks out, but just understand it's something that they weren't just wearing on special occasions or taking out once a year. It's had some time on the wrist, so you're gonna wanna get that checked out by your watch technician or at least look over it with the loop. Submersible. So submersible is a type of watch and that essentially means a piece that is waterproof or water rated to go for dives. So you'll see watches like the Submariners that I carry in this watch roll. 
you know? They're not submersibles technically, but they are submersibles in the sense that they can go underwater as you dive within a certain rating of depth for waterproof um, you know, efficiency. So Panerai has some submersibles made specifically for diving, and if you hear the word submersible, there should be a quality rating of how deep you can go and how waterproof the watch is. So just know that that water is prepped and designed for that specific activity. Chrono, so chrono is short for not chronometer, not anything that also relates to chrono. It usually means chronograph, which is the function on the timepiece that acts almost like a stopwatch. You start and stop it with the top trigger and reset it usually with the bottom trigger, and that will keep a specific uh, period of time on your piece, whether it's tracked with subdials or anything else. So when you hear chrono for short, sometimes people mean it like chronometer, but it really means chronograph 90% of the time. So just understand that that's a function, a complication is the correct term on the watch. Speaking of, complication. So complication is not something that is a disaster with the watch. Complication stands for a function of the watch. So when someone says a piece has four complications, they are indicating that that is the amount of functions on this specific time. Retail ready. So retail ready, I like to throw in the same category as slider. Retail ready means the watch has either been polished or cleaned and kept very immaculate so that when you go to resell this timepiece or you enjoy it, it's almost as if you were buying it from a retail store in the mall or in a boutique. Retail ready means it's good to go. You don't need to clean it. You don't need to polish it. You don't need to go get it checked for timekeeping. So just understand that's what it means. C-O-S-C, <laughs> Control Official of Swiss Chronometers. I just say C-O-S-C. You'll hear some real rednecks say cost. And essentially what it is, it's an official measurement of timekeeping where within negative four seconds to plus six seconds a day, uh, watches tending to keep time in immaculate shape and to that specificity of accuracy so that you know the timepiece has been fine-tuned, it needs no service, and it is keeping within that measurement. So you'll see COSC certificates sometimes when you actually open up a box, especially for things like Panerai or some of the older pieces. Just understand that that's what the acronym stands for, and you don't have to say all that stuff, you can just say COSC. Uh, bump, so like Mario jumps up to hit that brick and get that good old mushroom, bump means you usually type something on a listing you've made for sale or a post you've made in a Facebook group or on Reddit or in the forums where you are bumping your listing up to the top of the thread. So if you want your watch to be seen and viewed more frequently on a platform that doesn't essentially up that listing or renew that listing for you automatically, you have to manually go in and type bump. Uh, other people use TTT, triple T, which means to the top and it can do the same thing. So you go back in, type in that, and most people understand. You're letting people know that the watch is still available and this listing is going back to the top of everyone's search. Grail, like Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Grail is your ultimate timepiece that you've been dreaming of since inception, since the day you were born, since the day your little baby wrist could wear a watch or whatever. A Grail watch is a piece you're working towards to keep in your collection. My Grail watch has always changed. I know a lot of people who shift throughout time. Uh, I used to be an Audemars Piquet Royal Oak Offshore Brick. I've since had multiple of those, and now it's probably more in the Richard Mille range. But it's a watch that you love so much you can see yourself keeping for a long time. A lot of Ulysse Nardin tourbillons are up there as well. And I just think they're beautiful works of art. So if you have a Grail watch, feel free to share it in the comments. Grail is your piece that you want to keep forever. SS, stainless steel. If you see that in the listing, that means the watch case or something on the watch that's very prominent is made of stainless steel. RG, rose gold, not too hard there. Again, case material or something prominent on the watch is rose gold. YG, yellow gold, WG, white guys. No, I'm just kidding, white gold. <laughs> skeleton, so a skeleton piece is a watch that has the visibility of the movement that you can see through the watch face where you actually see the inner working. Some people will call that an open work like they do with the Audemars Piguet, but a skeleton is a watch that looks like a skeleton. You can see the bones, you can see the intricate designs without just one dial covering the inner guts of the timepiece. MOP, <laughs> mother of pearl. So that's a very specific dial that people desire. Uh, just know that when you see MOP, it's not mop, like bucket and cleaning, it's MOP, mother of pearl. Loom, so loom stands for luminescence, 
A watch usually has great loom for diving watches, for sport luxury watches. You'll see it on the indicators of the timepiece. You can go in the natural light and come back into the dark, and you'll see the luminescence on the indicators. Some of your watches have them, you probably haven't even noticed until you actually look at it in the dark. And TIA, TIA is just a great way to wrap up this lingo video, thanks in advance. Okay, so TIA, if you see that, that means here's the terms, here's how I like to do business, thanks in advance for anyone who has any questions. So thanks in advance for checking this out. I hope this helped you. If you like this, please share this video. Like, share, subscribe below. We're gonna have a lot of great content coming your way. And I can't wait to share more of this with you guys, whether you're just starting out or a diehard collector, okay? So share this video, like, share, subscribe, comment if you got some comments or some acronyms that we missed that you want us to touch on. And I can't wait to have you join our elite community of watch traders at Watch Trading Academy if you wanna know more, all right? Peace.